Hey, everybody, you're listening to the Total Basis Podcast. I'm your host, Felipe, uh, flying solo once again, talking some baseball with you, fantasy baseball more than anything on today's program. Um, well, as always, we have a spreadsheet to share, or at least I do. Just uh, trying to, I thought I had it. So the problem was I, before I started, my computer started acting all uh, unpredictable. So I had to restart, and now I can't find the stuff that I'm looking for. And but little by little, I'm getting there. Um, if I could change that to this now, all right. So anyway, hope everybody has a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Uh, for most of us, we're in the middle of the fantasy baseball playoffs. For some other folks, uh, we're still um. You know, playing regular season matchups, as crazy as that sounds, but September usually means that uh, uh, foot fantasy football season is right around the corner, and we need to wrap up this fantasy baseball season because it's getting in the way of football. <laughs> so uh, I myself uh, partook in two fantasy football drafts the last couple of weekends, and you guys might have noticed that I went ahead and switched over to um, uh, fantasy football, uh, fantasy football uh live draft reactions and just to uh i don't know that been meaning to do that for a while now uh I, we actually had something lined up with harry to talk but then i got sick with covid and harry um i believe he got sick too but it wasn't i don't think it was covid related but yeah then his work schedule got really hectic he has uh, weird hours so uh he has some flexibility but not the but not the greatest flexibility at the same time it's weird mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm here tonight, and uh, it's around the time of season. This is the time of year where we kind of uh, try to figure out what went right, what went wrong. And, uh, well, I wanted to – I, I don't think I've ever done this, but, you know, talk about some surprises and some disappointments. And for that, we do – like I said, we did have a spreadsheet to share. I believe it's this one, and there it is in, the, in all its glory. And uh, so what I did was I – downloaded the report uh, from my uh, Fantasy Points Head-to-Head -head League over at CBS Sports. Uh, I downloaded the report, and I just wanted to know, I wanted my own spreadsheet copy of who were the Fantasy Points uh, getters, who, uh, who had the most Fantasy Points among all hitters. So uh, the goal is to hopefully do oh, that. See, I forgot to turn that off. So uh, the, the goal was to... Uh, what do you call it? Um, get as uh, geez, I lost my channel. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, yeah, just to see the hitters, and the report is a humongous, humongous list of players. It, it goes. I mean, I still have the original copy here, but it, it goes deep. I think it just goes. It feels like it goes on forever. Let me see. Uh. Okay, maybe not as much, but yeah, 4,015. 4,015 players are listed. So I pared it down, narrowed it down to anybody who had over 100 points in our fantasy league, in our fantasy points league over at the CBS league. This is the Mardi Gras Madness league that I will tend to talk about from time to time. As you guys can see, it's the usual suspects at the very top. Aaron Judge, Shohei Otani, Bobby Witt. We were wondering if Bobby Witt uh, could actually, uh, if his production could translate uh in fantasy point because you know because of the stolen base prowess but he uh lacks or at least in his rookie year he lacked a little bit of skill set a little bit of skill remember it's either athleticism or, or a high skill set uh, and bobby witt seemed to lack a little bit of skill because it was a uh, low on base percentage well uh with a 392 on base percentage that that'll work that'll work so yes uh his roto success will translate to um points success as well Juan Soto we were wondering if because of the lack of steals if he was still uh, a viable option in rotisserie leagues and or any kind of league right because it, it looks like he was dropping let me see where, where the I have it on the other screen here and I have the fantasy fantasy pros ADP Juan Soto was going as the number eight overall player and number eight hitter in drafts this past season back in March. This goes back to March 25th of 2024. 
So it's kind of crazy to think that we lived in a world where we didn't trust Juan Soto, but apparently um, his 37 home runs, 96 RBI, uh, how many runs has he scored so far as of September 1st, or thereabouts, uh, 109 runs. And uh, a 418 on base percentage with a 291 batting average. So yeah, I, I, I can confidently say that Juan Soto in 2024, his play style can translate to any type of fantasy baseball format you could think about. So uh, yeah, that's we don't have to worry about him anymore. So let's put that to rest. Juan Soto is a viable option. I mean, as long as he has that skill set. And and once again, uh, was 109 walks versus only, only one well, 109 walks against 96 strikeouts. That's a walk to strikeout ratio over one. Uh, the batting eye is for real. And Jose Ramirez again, people were kind of down. I was able to get him in my uh 12 by 12 categories head to head league. Uh, with the 12th spot, I was the number 12 pick overall because I won the championship last year. I had to pick 12th. And there was Jose Ramirez, once again, just getting drafted on, on the back end of drafts this past season, this past draft season back in March. And all he has done was hit 34 home runs, 100, 105 RBI as of uh, uh, whenever it is that I printed out this report. And I, I, I listed it September 1st, but it was pretty late. Um, I, I, I don't know when CBS updates. They say they update whenever you, re- you print out the report, but I, I doubt it. So I'm I'm assuming it's September 1st. As of September 1st, that's the those are the numbers. And then he still gives you 34 stolen bases. So a threat to get 40 home runs, 40 stolen bases, 275 batting average, a pretty low 332 on base percentage. But as long as he's producing, who cares? You know, he's uh hacking his way on base and he's walking on base and just doing whatever it takes. But the guy I wanted to point out at number six, huge surprise is Jaron Duran. If I just hover over here, I can see the comments. There it is the preseason hitter rankings. And these are the rankings that the average draft position over at Fantasy Pros among all hitters. He was the 107th player hitter selected overall, according to Fantasy Pros back in March. So uh, players liked him, but they didn't like him that much to, to the tune of uh, he was the 107th best hitter selected uh, in drafts. And he was uh, according to ATC projection, the Ariel Cohen uh, projection system that he likes to use, uh, arguably still one of the most accurate projection systems out there, despite the fact that there is a little bit of an asterisk to him because of the fact that he kind of accumulates the data as opposed to create his own data. I don't know. If it works, it works. And as a, as a person who used to uh, used to uh, compile data and, and use other people's data to create my own data and try to make sense of it, I can appreciate the efforts that Ariel Cohen does. So uh, we're, we're team. We, we support Ariel here on this podcast. So we're all good there. But yeah, so he was way past 100. So what I like to do is I take one of those two numbers, either the 107 or the 106. And I usually go with the lower of the two. So we're going to go to who is the 106 best player. But getting back to Jaron Duran, Duran uh, kind of broke out last year. And he kind of, I mean, the ebb and flows to his the ebbs and flows to his season last year were kind of were very um, uh, frustrating. If you were a Jaron Duran owner last year, because he would be on the highest of highs and then go on the lowest of lows. But this year, he's putting it together. Uh, let's see here. I had the ATC numbers on the other screen here, but again, I had to restart the computer, so now I have to look for his name all over again. And there he is, Jaron Duran. <clears throat> now ATC projections, and like this is true among. All the projections out there, very conservative uh, numbers. You're not going to get the gaudy numbers because the that's not their job. But what we can do is see how they how these players compare uh, in this universe, so to speak, in this uh, in the Ariel Cohen universe. Where does Jaron Duran rank? And I was able to, and I also created a formula to copycat. The points that we use here uh, in our league. Don't ask me what the points are because, like, okay, so you got ten points for a win. Oh, but we're doing hitters, so forget forget the pitching stats. Uh, four points for a home run, three points for a triple, two points for a double, one point for a single, two points for a stolen base, one point for a walk, negative uh, zero point seven five for strikeouts, I believe. Um, 
negative one for getting caught stealing, I thought it was. You get a point for hit for getting hit by a pitch, obviously a point for a run and an RBI. <clears throat> so okay, so I, I somewhat memorize them, uh, the stats that you use. So I, I use that. I use this our scoring format to create the formula over at the at, at my ATC projections um that I like to use. And I created the projected fantasy points for the upcoming 2024 season. And that's how I got Jaron Durant to be player number 106. So and just to get, I rarely show this because I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like Jerry Krause said, this is mine. This is mine. I don't want to show this with anybody. But here it is. Uh, it's really colorful, so it might be hard to see. Uh, but, yeah, Jaron Duran, uh, again, this is a very conservative points uh, uh, projection system. And that's with any projection. They're very conservative because they're trying to, they're trying to uh, project what is more likely to happen as opposed to if things break out good for this player, if things break out well for this player. This player can hit 40 home runs and 100 RBI. That's that's like, you know, top-notch expectation. But as you guys can see, Jaron Duran was supposed to hit 13 home runs, uh, 55 RBI as a leadoff hitter. That makes sense. 28 stolen bases uh, with only a 262 batting average, which is respectable. Anything – so the colors here, uh, that's a conditional formatting that I like to use on, sp on these spreadsheets. So anything that's red is – amazing orange it's above average uh if it's a yellow color it's somewhat average if it's green it's below average and if it's blue it just it's just terrible the problem with this is that i actually uh did not pare down this list like i have in years past just because of time constraints i'm hoping that i could do a better job of um of uh utilizing my time better now i now after doing this for five seasons and i think uh I'm always tweaking the way I, I prepare for the drafts. So this year I didn't do any uh, positional rankings because I didn't want to spend any time, which by the way, I have to hide this uh, here. So I don't need that for now, but I, I tried to uh, put the positions. Uh, obviously 20 games. If, if they, if a player played 20 games in a, at a certain position in the years past, that means they will qualify. That's how I do it in two of my leagues. So that's how, that's the way I roll with that. But I I just didn't have the time this past off season to manually check every single player worth of note and <laughs> and to uh, punch it on the computer. This year I just took Ariel Cohen and uh, Ariel Cohen's projections, and I just uh, I just added my my calculations. I did the conditional formatting, and I just rolled with it. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to pare it down. There is how many players are in here? In years past, I think the hitters we were at, it would be at about three hundred or so. Yeah, seven hundred and two players with Mason McCoy being the worst player of the bunch. I highlighted Co I, I highlighted Kobe Mayo's for some reason. Oh, I, I think he was he might have been a keeper or a minor league player that I needed to look out for. And as you can see, there's a good reason for that. Uh, at number a player 674th in terms of fantasy points projected fantasy points uh he still uh came up with a very good ops and when that's the ops is the on base plus slugging percentage pretty good woba which is the weighted on base average that's the advanced statistic and wrc plus had him at 105 which basically he's five percent better than league average for a rookie those are pretty darn good numbers Obviously, he ended up not doing that for the Orioles. As, uh, yeah, we'll get to the or Orioles in just a second. But yeah, you know, even though these guys are are down at the bottom because they're not getting any any playing time, and and in retrospect, a lot of these guys should have been deleted, and I should have pared down the list, um, uh, to a lower number. But then again, I saw names like Thomas Segesi, Jefferson Caro, uh, Wenseal Perez. Guys like that, I saw those names show up, and I started feeling bad because, well, I don't want to get rid of those names. Kobe Mayo, like, all these prospect players that, again, here's another spreadsheet that I <clears throat> that I never share with anyone, but I figured, well, now would be the time to share because the season's almost over. But well, who were those guys again? Let's see. And I, I have a complicated way of looking at prospects. It's not the an exact science, but my thing is always to try to figure out 
if I can anticipate who has the best chance of getting called up sooner rather than later. And obviously, where was Jefferson Carroll last year? It's Jefferson Carroll over the Milwaukee Brewers catcher. Uh, yeah, he finished a year in double A. So I anticipated that he was going to finish, was probably only going to play in triple A in 2024. But he had a pretty good season last year with a Woba, minor league Woba of 351. And I forgot. Yeah, uh, that must have been the double A number there of 351 last year. Uh, has pretty good fielder, some decent hitting uh, grades there. But I ranked them number 44 because uh, my number one priority is who has a better chance of getting called up. And if they do get called up, do they have a the tools and the pedigree and the production to um, stick around and not just get called up, but also be productive and, 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 and be, be players of value of, of really, really high value. So I mentioned the go, I mentioned Caro. Uh, I also mentioned when seal Perez, which, uh, well, there's Thomas Segesi ranked number 56 overall. Qualifies at second base and third base, according to Fangraphs, 22-year-old Cardinals player, 10th uh, at the time that I did the research. He was the 10th best prospect for the Cardinals. And I know we're not supposed to, it was supposed to be a Major League Baseball surprises and disappointments type of situation. But I just wanted to point out as to why I decided not to delete and pare down the list. I guess I could have done it. There's Brennan Davis and his achy, breaky back right there at number 678. And then uh, when Seal Perez, where was he? Where did I rank him? Because I know that I was pretty high on him. But let's see. But I don't know if it was that high. Uh, oh, I'll just oh, there he is. Number 59. Yeah, second uh, middle infielder. Uh, I had some high hopes for him. Even though he's kind of a late bloomer, so to speak, because he this is the, the grades that you see here. 35 out of 55, the 30 out of 30, the 40 out of 40 raw power. Uh, the 35 out of 55, sorry for those who can't who aren't watching this on YouTube. 35 out of 55, that's the hit tool that he had. That's the grade that he that fangraphs gave him back in 2022. Uh 393 minor league Woba back at AAA. So I figured, well, he has low pedigree, low upside from the looks of it, by being a 40 future value. But you know what? He might get called up this upcoming season and he might play some center field because I thought I read somewhere that they might try him out in center field. And he was pretty productive uh, for the first couple of weeks that he got called up. And then, of course, uh, reality hit. Also, I saw Victor Scott on this on the ATC projections. I forgot where exactly, but I know that he was someone that people were talking about as a deadly base dealer. Uh, so I decided, you know what, let's just keep it around. You never know. You never know. You never know what could happen. And. Some suddenly like there's David Hamilton. Remember, if, for those who know who David Hamilton is, he was basically a guy that saved a lot of folks' uh, season off waivers because he just stole a ton of bases. And then I don't know. Last I checked, he kind of fell down to earth. There's Tyler Fitzgerald, which I don't have him anywhere. Wait, maybe I do. There was something. Wait a minute, Tyler Fitzgerald. Did I have him in my prospect rankings? And the, and the, it's. The other thing about the minor league rankings is every team has to be represented. So that's why there's a bunch of Rockies players that I decided to roll the dice on. Obviously, I think I've seen Drew Romo get called up. I'm not 100% sure. I really don't care. It's the Rockies. Who cares? They suck. There's Jordan Beck, Zach Veen, Jordan Pereira as a post-hype uh, prospect sleeper. I kept them around. You never know. Oh, there's I just saw Simon Muzi Muziati from the Phillies, 25-year-old. Yeah, the Phillies didn't, don't have much in terms of... Uh, prospects especially out of triple a but if anybody was going to get called up it would have been him i did see him on the atc projections somewhere on the list here let me see yeah it doesn't matter i did see him though so it's pretty cool that whatever i was doing with these prospect rankings these guys were still showing up on this uh, oh there is simon Mat mutziotti philadelphia phillies uh yeah I was gonna get a late late september call up probably and chip in maybe what what was that 16 points for the season. But uh so I was looking for a player here on the prospect rankings and I forgot who it was. Ah crud. Da, 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 da. Hold on, let's pause this for a little bit. What the hell was I looking for? All right, yeah, and there's uh Victor Scott number 70. Uh 
there's Will Wagner, the Billy's kid from the Astros, although he might, I think he got traded. The point is that there he is at rank number 76. I went ahead and ranked him there uh, as maybe a late call up of sorts. Um, I st- oh, Lawrence Butler. See, I forgot all about Lawrence Butler. And it's a thing, you know, when you're trying to make decisions and you're 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 on a time crunch that's the downside of doing these uh rank these minor league rankings is that you i kind of forgot about some of the players that i had ranked before but yeah lawrence butler was my number 48 prospect coming into the season age 23 prospect back in march or april or whenever it was that i did this um 363 minor league uh weighted on base average and he did make it to the majors last year, but he still qualified as a rookie. So I added him on the list. Oh, man. I can't remember the player. There's Joey Loperfito, who I believe is now with the Blue Jays as well. Uh, Connor Norby, now with the Marlins. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't remember who the hell I was trying to look for. Ah, it's fine. Oh, wait. Tyler Fitzgerald, right? Did I have him there? So I just saw Fitzgerald here. Or... or is that his name? I don't know. Some 26-year-old late blooming prospect who people fell in love with. I know my friend uh, Prima was trying to push him on me. Like, hey, if you want to win your championship in this league, you bet you gotta you gotta take Tyler Tyler Fitzgerald. You gotta take him. Like, nah, I don't think so, bud. I'm taking him and his 30% strikeout rate. Was that what I wonder if that was his projection? As you can see, it's a lot of blue here for Tyler Fitzgerald. I'm spending way too much time. Yeah, 30% strikeout rate. So Eight, uh, Ariel got it right. That's the last I checked, uh, at least after the All Star break, that's how much he's been doing in terms of the strikeout rate 30%. And that's pretty much his MO at this point. Did I, but did I have him here? And it looks like I may not have. No, I did not. I thought I had him there. So never mind. Anyway, that's why I didn't want to do it because I saw a lot of names that I had put on my other list, on my prospect hitting list. And I kind of felt bad and then got the fear of missing out and. Obviously, these players were not going to get drafted at all. There's Jonathan Ornelas from the Texas Rangers. I believe I had him ranked somewhere. He's ranked number 638th overall in the prospect rankings over with uh, Ariel after I did the uh, fantasy point formula. And on the other sheet, Jonathan Ornelas, shortstop third baseman for your Texas Power Rangers, 24-year-old. He was ranked 61st overall, so I must have uh, seen something in him and so, you know, he got might get called up or he might get traded. Either way, I want to keep an eye on him, keep track of him. Uh, pretty good hit tool. Not lacks power, but has pretty good speed. Can field. Low upside, however, but 344. Waited on base average in the minors last year. And he did get called up to the, to the majors. So let's keep an eye on him. And I have no idea what he's up to this year. But that was a method to the madness. So there you go. You guys got to see two spreadsheets that I never, ever share with folks. I'm sharing it now. Let me make sure I got the uh, projections. Oh, well, these are the projections. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. I am going back to Jaron Duran's name. That's who. This, that's how this show got started. I'm talking about Jaron Duran. We're off to a rip-rowing start here. And off it goes. Let's see. Jared Ryan, number 106 player. So, yeah, he, I mean, he super, has superseded, again, conservative figures. But still, I mean, he superseded the home run total. He superseded the RBI, the batting average, the on-base percentage. So he has, I mean, to go from 106 to the sixth best player in terms of fantasy points. Uh, yeah, you, you had to go above and beyond what you normally do, what you were expected to do. So, again... Rather than go to Gunnar Henderson, who's the other player I'm going to uh, talk about eventually, like I said, I'm going to take the lowest number, and that's the ATC projection. 106th overall, that was Jaron Duran. And I'm going to go down to the 106th best player on this list. And that is Dansby Swanson. So he's in blue. So, yeah, that's a, a huge disappointment for Dansby Swanson. First of all, he has the big contract. But he also came with a lot of high expectations. A lot of high expectations. So let's see. Check out the rankings here. So he's the 106th best player in terms of fantasy point. But ADP had him as a 70th best hitter and 47th overall fantasy points getter in ATC. Uh, 
Swanson was supposed to finish ahead of guys like uh uh let's take a look at other middle infielders on the other spreadsheet. Matt he was supposed to do better than Matt McClain, Luis Arias, Andres Jimenez. Uh I was gonna say Royce Lewis, but I, I still think of him as a shortstop, but obviously he's a third baseman. Willie Adamas, Bryson Stott, uh Ellie de la Cruz, O'Neill Cruz, Ha Sung Kim. All those guys, Max Muncy, if you believe he's still a second baseman, middle infielder. But yeah, uh, Dansby Swanson, he was supposed to be better than Anthony Volpe as well. Although I think anybody could be better than Anthony Volpe at this point. So yeah, uh, even Ezekiel Tovar, who had some uh, a double double, you know, 10 home runs, 10 stolen bases potential playing in Colorado. But Dansby Swanson was supposed to be better than all those guys, but 47th overall according to ATC projections. And all he has done is disappointed, uh, falling well below. What was this projected uh, home run total according to ATC? It was 24 home runs. And he's only, he's barely halfway in there at 12. He, he has 15 stolen bases, so that's a good thing. However, oh, yeah, 11 stolen bases. Okay, I thought I thought he was projected to, yeah, never mind. I, I, was, I thought it was a much lower number than that. But yeah, projected number 11 stolen bases. Um, 256 batting average, 234 batting average. Oh, 256 batting average was his projection. He's hitting uh, 234. The on base projection for him, according to ATC, was 326. And he is currently at 305 on base, 372 current slugging percentage when he was expected to slug 435. That's big, man. That's humongous. And so far, he has not lived up to expectations. Uh, let's see who. So I listed all the players he was supposed to be better than. Let's see if we can find any other middle infielders uh, on this list. Uh, Jordan Westberg, and he's been hurt for a while now. He's still doing better, much better than Dan S.B. Swanson this year. Uh, Ryan McMahon, who I never have faith in, but he's still producing. Obviously, there's a. A, a total, uh, a, an accumulation aspect to it, but still McMahon outproducing, uh, outscoring in points league, in this points league at least. Dansby Swanson, Sedena Rafaela, and he's been playing all year. And every time I think he's going to get sent down, he just stays around. Even with his putrid 284 on base percentage, he still uh, has reached 300 points faster than Dansby Swanson did. Uh, who else is ahead of uh, Dansby Swanson? Uh, in terms of middle infielder, there's, uh, we'll stay there. Uh, ha Sung Kim, but we'll get to him in a little bit. So, yeah, Dansby Swanson, major disappointment. Um, if you're a Cubs fan, I mean, he's one of the reasons why your team can't get off the ground. But, hey, at least he's still beating Glabar Torres. So, that's a thing. That's a something. Hmm. Ah. So, I mentioned before. ADP 70th overall, so we're going to take the lower numbers. The ATC 47th ranked. Let's see who the 47th ranked hitter is. I might have seen it already, but yeah, and all these colors, they all, they're going to mean something, but obviously Dansby Swanson in blue means that he's a disappointment. But here's Zachary, or at least Zach Neto, uh, highlighted in that orange, meaning that he's doing very well. Oops, he's trying to center his name down, but so Zach Neto, Doing pretty decent. Uh, and how it started, he was the 183rd best hitter being selected in drafts in this past March. 136th best hitter, according to the ATC projections, fantasy points formula that I used. So what was that number? 136? What, what did I say it was? 136. So 136. What was his projections coming into the season? 18 home runs. 62 RBI, six, uh, nine stolen bases, 249 batting average, 326 on base, and a 400, uh, 420 slugging percentage. And how's he doing this year? Uh, he's already surpassed his home run total, 20. Already surpassed his stolen base potential, 25 stolen bases. Uh, hitting uh, with a higher batting average, a higher on, slightly higher on. Actually, the on base is low, but that's okay. It's okay because even though the 318 on base percentage is pretty low, Neto 
what was that? What did I say? The slugging percentage should have was projected at 420. He's actually slugging 446. So he's giving up on the on base and doing more slugging, which in theory that should equal to more fantasy points in terms of doubles, 28 doubles. Oh, I also have the projected doubles on the other screen here. The projected doubles for Zach Neto, 25. So he's already surpassed that. And we already talked about him in a recent episode of guys that you need to pick up right away and that might might pay off uh, as the year goes on. And that, was, that that episode was done either in July or August. So we've talked about Neto a lot. I like him. This is a pretty good first full season to his uh, career here and a nice way to build off for the future. It is the Angels, though, so who knows if uh, bat luck rear, it rears its ugly head. But I like what Neto has shown me this year. And I could see myself... Um, targeting him hopefully late in drafts let's like take a look at Neto is doing better than Nico Horner I'm only looking at other middle infielders uh Bryce Terang who's kind of had of a breakout year this year I I've heard so many podcasts talk so much junk about him like oh he's not the real deal he's a bust he's a first round bust the Brewers are better off just moving off uh moving on, uh moving on from him and he's basically saved my two Category leagues, head to head category leagues that I'm in. It's Bryce Terang. I, I just inserted him at, at at the middle infield position and he just went crazy at the start of the year. He's cooled off significantly, but yeah, there's no denying that he's broke out. But Neto is still beating him. Jeremy Pena, Neto's doing better than Jeremy Pena as far as middle infielders go. Jonathan India, who's having himself a pretty darn good year with a 349 on base percentage, 13 home runs, 12 stolen bases. Uh, doing better than O'Neill Cruz, who is supposed to be this <laughs> like toolsy player that is supposed to just be out of this world. Very exciting between him and Ellie LaCruz. Uh, Cruz is the their Cruz, they're supposed to be cruising into the season, and it turns out Ellie had the more explosive 2024 campaign, but O'Neill was supposed to be on par with him. Uh, Neto is doing better than him in terms of points. Luis Arias, uh, and uh, I'll get to that guy in pink. For those of you got on YouTube, you guys see a name in pink there. I'll get to him in just a bit. But that's Zach Neto. Uh, I would say that he's uh, that he's surprised, pleasantly surprised people. So again, I take the lower number, one hundred and thirty-six. So let's go to player number one hundred and thirty-six on his points league chart. Uh, so player, wow, I'm going deep here. The one hundred and thirty-six best player in fantasy points is Nate Lowe. And I, I highlighted his name in blue. He definitely is a major disappointment because I thought he had a pretty decent year last year, at the very least. It, and it could have been a, a season where he could build off on for 2024 last. Uh, so, yeah, I, I I liked him last year. And I think uh, Ariel liked him too. 60th uh, ATC player, a uh, hitter, I should say. The 60th ranked hitter, according to the ATC projections after I inserted my fantasy points formula, 127th average draft position in terms of the hitters. So if I'm just going to read out what I what he was supposed to do this season, 20 home runs, 77 RBI, to a really high or respectable 270 batting average, pretty decent 353 on base percentage, modest 433 slugging percentage. So not pretty darn good, uh, especially in today's game. And instead, Nate Lowe, is struggling to get to 15 home or actually struggled to get to 10 home runs. He only has 11 home runs, only has 49 RBI. Not he's not meeting his batting average or his uh on base percentage, although uh, it's pretty close. On base percentage is pretty close, 348 versus 353 projected. But yeah, he's not producing anywhere else. 375 slugging percentage is unacceptable for a hitter of his talent and playing his position that he plays, he is supposed to be better than that. So major, this, I actually had him. I, I use it, utilize him while I was waiting for Tristan Cassis to come back from injury. And uh, he did enough to stick around my team during a majority of the time there. But yeah, he, he was uh, just not living up to expectations whatsoever. So that, that, yeah, I feel comfortable highlighting his name in blue. Big disappointment. Entering the season, I was expecting much more. I agree with some of AT, the ATC projections that Ariel posted about Nate Lowe. I was expecting 
similar. Like Nate Lowe was supposed to do better than Josh Naylor. Yeah, I'm a huge Josh Naylor fan. Although I wasn't gonna pick Nate Lowe over Josh Naylor. I was targeting Josh Naylor very late in drafts. Unfortunately, I only got him in one of my leagues. Uh, but still, I, I'm a big Josh Naylor uh, fan. So definitely, I would I would have picked Josh Naylor over Nate Lowe, but Lowe got the nod in ATC's projections uh, uh, when I punched in the fantasy formula. Any other corner infielders? Uh, Lowe, Nate Lowe was supposed to be finishing, was supposed to do better than Vinny Pasquantino. Better than Ellie Lug Cruz. I'm just looking at corner infielders. Better than Jazz Chisholm. Um, better than Spencer Steer. Better than Max Muncy. Better than Reese Hoskins. So, yeah, the, the expectations were looming pretty big for Nate Lowe as a steady first baseman. And that did not happen. So, so <clears throat> it's an, excuse me. So we go to the 60th best hitter on the on this points chart here. And it's Mookie Betts. And that's a tough one. That's why I put oops. So I put Mookie in pink, that pink reddish color there. Oh my god, this stupid laptop. Come on, man. Concentrate. There we go. Mookie Betts. He was supposed to finish as the third best uh, average draft position player, third best ATC projection. We know who Mookie Betts is. We know what he can do. We know what we're, the expectations are. He got uh, an injury. I forgot what happened. I think it was a hand injury. I'm not 100% sure. It doesn't matter. I, I had him in my ESPN, the podcast league, the Total Basis Podcast League. And once he went down, my team just was in, incredibly inconsistent without him. And it's no surprise that my team made the playoffs just in, just as he was coming back from injury. But I was this close to missing the playoffs. I was on the outside looking in for a lot of the majority of the uh, season, especially once he went down. But once he got brought back up, um, my chances increased. Very important player. But he, I wouldn't call him a disappointment. I mean, the injury, can't blame him for the injury. And let's face it, he's not going to see a dip in – draft position next year i don't know if he's going to be as high as third uh but he's i think he's still a first round pick 14 home runs 13 still in bases and what ended up being part-time duty 299 batting average 391 on base percentage and a whopping 490 slugging percentage so yeah mookie bets uh he's he's he'll be fine excuse me Mookie Betts will be fine. Uh, we can trust them for next season. So let's go. Who is player number three here? So we go up to number three, and that's Bobby Witt. We just talked about Bobby Witt really quickly. So what I ended up doing was, uh, okay, so who's the next player I was not expected to see in the top ten? And right away, uh, Jaron Duran was number six, and number seven is Gunnar Henderson for the Baltimore Orioles. Um, ADP, average draft position, 26 overall. The ATC aerial could projections had him at number 34. And uh I like I loved Gunnar Henderson last year, but was not a fan of people reaching for him this season, and I was not gonna do that. So I ended up not having any shares of Gunnar Henderson, much to my disappointment, but I managed, I managed to find other alternatives. Uh, let's see. 26 home runs were the projections. 81 RBI, 12 stolen bases, 261 average, 340 on base, 476 slugging. Pretty, pretty good. Gunner ends up hitting a whopping 33 home runs. Uh, 80 RBI, so he's right there with his uh, conservative projection from ATC. Already surpassed the stolen base total of 16 stolen bases this season. He has surpassed uh, the batting average, the on base, and slugging a whopping 527 this season. That's good for seventh place overall. Gunnar Henderson living up to expectations uh, for the Baltimore Orioles. 
and and uh it's pretty remarkable to see on a team full of up and coming prospects that it's Gunnar Henderson that whose star shines brightest, which I guess I should have expected it, but I wasn't expecting it to be this soon, especially with the number of players that the Orioles have. Um excuse me, that, that are supposed to be coming out of the pipeline. I'm trying to get the roster resource page up and running. But yeah, you got Jackson Holiday, who's uh, got out to a really bad start when he got called up the first time. Then he got into a really hot start when he got called back up again in uh, in the last month or so. And now he's cooled down quite significantly. But yeah, it's not him. Adley Rushman. <laughs> I just saw that uh, Adley Rushman not doing so well. I think I, after, I think I just realized there's William Contreras. He might William Contreras might be the best hitting catcher this season, ranked number 16th overall. And the next catcher, Salvador Perez. And if you don't like him because he's not a true catcher or whatever whatever reason, I'm looking. Oh my God, Yanir Diaz. And there's Adley Rushman at number four. A lot. I just remember my my uh, my my co commissioner in the Baseball Life League, uh, at, uh, Aaron from Canada. She picked Adley Rushman at number two, and it's not a coincidence that she missed the playoffs. <laughs> I kept telling folks, "Hey, you guys might want to wait late." And then I remember that she trashed me for it, like, "Well, I don't want no bum named Yandy Diaz catching for me." And like, I think she meant Yanir Diaz, and I think that was a. Uh, a shot taking towards me because I'm the one who drafted the NRDS and that league is a two catcher league. So yeah, she was definitely, uh, she had me on her crosshairs, but as I say, listen, you, you, getting Adley Rushman is like getting Travis Kelsey last season in fantasy football. If you don't feel comfortable the way the rest of the catching landscape looks, then by all means get Adley Rushman. It, I guess, you know, I, I, I made an argument that I guess that those are the right thing to do, but I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. And it turns out I was right. Yanner Diaz, getting Yanner Diaz later in the draft was the correct thing to do because it uh, could concentrate on other positions of of, um, of more productivity and not waste an early round draft pick on, on a catcher. And, but Felipe, you play in a two catcher league. Yeah, well, uh, Bo Naylor was still there. And my guy, Ivan Herrera. When in doubt, just get Ivan Herrera, Herrera as your third catcher, and you won't regret a thing. Especially if you play in on base percentage leagues, that's the best advice I can give you guys. So yeah, William Contreras. Not only is he the number one catcher, but he's holding his own. He's a top twenty player on this on this list. So good for him. But getting back to oh the Orioles, right? I was talking about the Orioles, and it's a, it's a team full of prospects, and it ends up being Gunnar Henderson being the cream of the crop, uh, the top of the line. Yeah, Colton Kowser has uh, shown up this year. With 20 home runs. Uh Kobe Mayo, uh, he's been struggling, so he's not live up to expectation. Connor Norby is no longer with the team. So yeah, it, it turns out that Gunnar Henderson, uh, Jordan Westbrook actually played a little bit. Uh actually he had a, he was having a pretty good season. I I I I enjoyed having Jordan Westbrook on my team this past year. Uh, but then he fractured his hand out for the well, who knows? But as far as I was concerned, he was out for the year. So I, I decided to drop him in my podcast league, in the Total Basis Podcast League. Heston Church, that um, I'm not quite sure what he's done this year, but it doesn't matter. He's the, the cream of the crop is Gunnar Henderson, and he's the one living up to expectations on a team loaded with uh, Uber prospects. He's the most Uber prospect of them all. So. As mentioned, 26 ADP, 34th ATC. So we're going to go to the 26th best player. And that's, I will never understand how Matt Chapman is still relevant. That just pisses me off to see his name up here. ADP is a 164th best hitter that was drafted in back in March. And 120th overall in the ATC projections. So a guy who you can practically get for nothing, literally nothing, right? Let me double check that. So <clears throat> Matt Chapman. So let's take a look on the other screen. Double check. Oh, my God. He... <laughs> 164th, be uh, uh, 164th best hitter selected. 
as far as average draft position goes. But he was selected on average as the 271st player this past March, which is just ridiculous. 271 divided by a 12 team. That's the 22nd, 23rd round. That's the way, way, way late in the draft. So for a late round pick, you got a top 30 player. Just bananas. Just crazy, crazy to me. I, I And I'm sorry, I don't see Matt Chapman that way. I don't see him as a top 30 player whatsoever. You guys, all you guys can have him. I will live without him. I know Melvin's a big fan. I think he's in the He's in the podcast league, so I, I now I know how Melvin's winning. He's just riding the lightning in a bottle. That is Matt Chapman. Matt Chapman was supposed to still hit for a decent power, twenty three home runs. Those are that was his projection: seventy RBI projection, um, two thirty four average, three twenty seven on base, pretty good. Uh, again, it's not the pair down list, but three twenty seven shows up as orange because of all the other players that showed up. At the, as you guys saw, uh, in blue, a lot of the uh, inexperienced players showing up as well. 441 slugging. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat there. And instead, he's uh, superseded the batting average. He has superseded the on-base percentage, and he's still has met expectations with the slugging percentage. He's doing slightly better than the projection, but it's about the same, 441 versus 442. And he's about to match the ATC projections of 21 home runs. And on top of that, he's pitching in 13 stolen bases. What is this world coming to? 33 doubles this year. He was projected to only hit 26. And mind you, he's doing this mostly as a Giants player. Uh, I, well, I, I yeah, Giants player, right? I don't think he's been traded or anything like that. I forget. I know he's with the Giants now. At least that was listed as being a Giants player. Matt Chapman, wow. Matt Chapman doing better than Manny Machado this season, better than Jazz Chisholm, better than Michael Garcia, who has uh, who has more at-bats than him. Obviously, he does not have the same powers, uh, power prowess, so to speak. But he makes Michael Garcia makes up for it in, double, uh, in stolen bases still. Uh Matt Chapman has over 400 points, and Michael Garcia is at 369 points. Wow. Just better than Isaac Paredes, who I'm a big fan of. Better than Eugenio Suarez, who's kind of come on strong in the last couple of uh, weeks or so. Or not, no, and actually, since the All Star break, he's posted some decent. Numbers. I actually have him in both of my categories leagues just because I was in desperate need for a corner infielder and. As much as I want to hate on Eugenio Suarez and cut him right away, he's he's shown up better than yeah. So that's Matt Chapman, the top thirty player. I don't believe it. There's no way. There's no way. I'm I'm still picking Manny Machado over Matt Chapman in drafts next year, and even in among uh, corner infielders, Pete Alonso. Yeah, I'm picking Alonso. Alec Baum. Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I, I would rather not, if I have to pick one though, cause I would rather not have any of those guys, but if I have to gun to my head, it is Alec Baum. Rather have him. Vinny Pasquantino. Oh, you guys know I'm a big Vinny Pasquantino fan. Huge fan. Sablo Perez. If he qualifies a catcher, I guess I'd pick him over Matt Chapman. Michael Garcia. I'm not, you guys know I'm not a big fan of the punch and Judy hitters, but I guess I, I guess I'll go with Matt Chapman, but I'm not happy about it. Jake Cronenworth, uh, I think I'll pick Chapman reluctantly. Alex Bregman, I, I think Bregman, if he can get his act to, I don't know what the hell's wrong with that, Bregman. I have an idea, but I, it's not enough evidence for me to say it out loud, I guess. But Bregman, he should be doing better than this. He should be where Chapman is. Bregman, number 46 overall on this points league uh, chart. Chapman at number 26. Am I picking? I'm picking Matt Olson. Over Chapman, I, I still am a believer of in Isaac Paredes, especially I can probably get him at value, much better value than I can Matt Chapman. Ch Chapman's price is going to go up. Known commodity, was it in the MVP of April last year or two years ago? I'm going to get him. I'm going to draft him. 
Luisa Reyes. Yeah, I think I would rather have Luisa Reyes. And uh, Eugenio Suarez. Yeah, Eugenio Suarez is going to go late next year. I think he's going to go late in drafts next year. So the value is there. And I'm, I'm, and I was a big uh, Eugenio Suarez hater last year. But yeah, he's coming around. He's uh, holding his own this season. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's Matt Chapman. So what, let's go to player number 128. And who is that player? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 128. Come on. There you go. I just saw him. No, that, no that's Nate Lowe. Yeah, Andrew McCutcheon. Wow. Andrew McCutcheon. Like he, We have no reason to talk about Andrew McCutcheon on this podcast, but Game recognized game, man. I mean, I, I, I uh, rumors of his demise have been over exaggerated. Yeah, he went 253rd overall in draft, uh, in, uh, in among the hitters in average draft position last this past March. He was 434th overall. Think about that 434th overall in March. That's the 36th round. For those drafts that go crazy like that. Folks are taking in super duper deep leagues are, are taking Andrew McCutcheon as a flyer at that point, but he, he probably would have been good waiver wire, uh, you know, streaming option for those looking for a temporary solution at outfield 17 home runs this season, 339 on base, 414 slugging percentage, which let's face it, that was more than I expected out of McCutcheon this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just looking at the other screen. What was he supposed to do this upcoming season, according to the projections? 13 home runs. So, yeah, he already surpassed that. 50 RBI. No, he did not surpass the RBI total. But he did. He didn't even surpass batting average. He was supposed to hit 242. He's at 238 right now. 342 on base. He's only at 339. But the big one, the where the points are, is in the slugging percentage. 414 slugging percentage versus the projected 390. So that explains why he is doing better and why he's ranked 128th overall. Uh ahead of guys like you know, super prospects like Cole Keith, Wyatt Lanks, Langford, Sal Freelick, Joey Ortiz, I'm a, I'm a big fan of. Jose Miranda. Any any others? Any other prospects? Mark Vientos. Who else is on this thing? Post hype sleeper Gavin Lux, post hype sleeper prospect, I should say. Okay, let's go back. <clears throat> Andrew McCutcheon playing better than Langford, Weiler Abreu. Although I think Weiler was injured, better than Sal Felix, better than JD Martinez, better than Byron Buxton. Although we know what Buxton's deal is, he's always hurt. Better than Charlie Blackman. So I remember earlier in the season, I was like, I was talking about Charlie Blackman being a viable option that off the waiver wire and the, after one week of regular season play. And I regret that to this very end. I think, well, I figure he's off to a great start. Wait until he gets to Colorado. And we waited and we're still waiting. Meanwhile, McCutcheon is, uh, has 271 fantasy points in my, in this league that we're in. Blackman only at 256. Better than Kyle Tucker is McCutcheon, but Tucker was hurt. Better than Jake Myers. But, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I, Jake Myers still kind of raw at this point. Excuse me. Better than Giancarlo Stanton. Better than Michael Conforto. So, so yeah, a lot of questions. A lot of red flags on, on those outfielders I just mentioned. And there's Andrew McCutcheon just still fucking away. For the Pirates and just padding those points. So, I'm not saying that he, everybody messed up by not selecting him, but definitely he he would have been a pleasant surprise. He would have been a pleasant surprise um, at outfield this past season. Let's see, where is Andrew McCoy? Oh, yeah, I did check him off. All right, let's go to player number 200. And this is a big surprise here. Uh, it's Richard, Richie Palacios. 
qualifies at second base and corner outfield. He went 360th in uh, uh, the 360th best hitter in average draft positions. I, I'm afraid to even ask where that would put him in overall ADP. So we're we're getting crazy here. That that's we're not expecting much. But the reason I, I decided that I was gonna because I was on the brink of not mentioning him. That's why I have him in yellow because he's not a surprise, but he's not a disappointment. He definitely got hurt. He has missed about a month in what looked to be a breakout season. So instead of looking at at, at his projections, because, uh, well, let's take a look just for giggles, right? On the other screen, Richie Palacios. Here we are. Oh, that's Josh Palacios. There he is. Richie Palacios. He was supposed to not do much of anything, but he did come with a, pro, uh, you know, for a guy who was ranked 416th overall on that eight on those ATC projections, and was only going to score 106 points. He post he the projected triple slash line was pretty respectable for a guy like him. 243 average, 319 projected on base. People listening to this are probably wondering, thinking that that's nothing. That's something to brag about. But compared to everybody else, that is. I mean, it's a lot of green and bluish. Remember, green and blue are below average. Rich Palacios is right among average, along with guys like uh, Ivan Herrera. My guy! Uh, who else is around there? I guess you could add Jason Domingos to the list of guys with similar batting average and on-base percentage. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he he really sticks out. I mean, you can see it. Doesn't mean that you should probably draft him or even pick up off waivers, but there is something there. And then I, I took a look at his uh, at his uh, season so far. Mm-hmm. And Richie Palacios was having a breakout year before he got hurt back in July. Um, he was uh, getting regular playing time. I believe he's a, the, on the left-handed side of the platoon there at certain positions with the Tampa Bay Rays. But yeah, he was uh, getting a lot of playing time. He was playing in 88 games. That's a career high for him this year. 301 plate appearances. That's a career high. 46 runs, 21 RBI, 19 big stolen bases. So for those who are always talking about, Felipe, all you do is ignore the stolen bases. Well, here I am pointing out a guy with sneaky stolen base potential. He stole 19 before he got hurt. Pretty damn good batting eye. So if you're going to steal a lot of bases, at least show me that you have a batting eye. At least that tells me that you're not just a one-dimensional player. And playing for the Rays, I should not be surprised that he does have really good play discipline. 14% walk rate, 21.9% strikeout rate this season. A whopping 350 on base percentage. So that that that's gonna catch my attention. So I don't know what the future holds for Richie Palacios or if, if what team he's gonna play for, if he's gonna be allowed the same freedom that he was given as of Tampa Bay Ray. But speaking of the Tampa Bay Rays, I mean Palacios, despite the fact that he's only had 253 at bats, he's still outscoring his uh teammate Jose Siri, who has a hundred more at bats than him, but only but he's still behind a point and a half in this league. Doing better than super utility player Mauricio Dubon. Doing better than Will Benson, who kind of broke out last year. Better than veteran Starlin Marte. Better than veteran Mike Talkman. Better than uh, consensus number one catcher on a yearly basis, JT Real Muto. Although not this year. I know that when in doubt, people draft JT Real Muto because that's a household name. Better than Luis Robert. And again, Robert has more at-bats than he does. Despite the fact, yeah, 311 at-bats versus 253 at-bats. And Palacios is closer to 200 than Robert is. Better than Japanese superstar Lars Nootbaar. 
who kind of made a name for himself in the World Baseball Classic last year. Palacios is still outscoring guys like Lars Nootbaar, veterans like Kevin Pilar. It's quite remarkable what Palacios has done in part-time duty. So I I might I might keep an eye on him for next season. Especially if he's and with the Rays, it's always difficult because they don't guarantee playing time. At least from my experience, they don't. Yeah, he's doing better than Josh Lowe, who is supposed to be the Rays future outfielder for all eternity. And Palacios outscored him. That's crazy. Better than Jake Bowers. Man, oh man. Mitch Hanniger. Palacios was doing better than Mitch Hanniger again. Hanniger with 100 more at bats. Definitely better than Michael Harris. So, yeah, I, yeah, it's something to keep an eye on. <sighs> so I'm just uh, doing some quick calculation. I'm wondering, I'm pretty sure it's not a lot. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a one home run every 50 at bats. So that's nothing to brag about. But yeah, I'm telling you that, that, um, that walk to strikeout ratio is pretty impressive. Yeah, 0.63. That, that'll play with me. So, if Richie Palacios, deep, deep sleeper for 2024. We shall find out. So, because uh, that's too high, I'm not going 360th overall. Well, I'm just kind of curious who was the 360th best player on this list? Does it go that far? No, it doesn't. <laughs> So we go back to the top. We're almost done here, guys. The next guy is Marcel Azuna. And this is, uh, I was only getting, only able to get him in one of my leagues. That was a podcast. Uh, no, it was actually this league. Actually, I actually had Marcel Azuna in this points league, which is ironic because I was hoping to get him in all my leagues. And I got cold feet, especially in my categories leagues, because we have so many positions to fill out. Three different outfield positions. Uh Six infielders, you know, the traditional first, second, short, third, and then a middle and a corner infielder. Obviously, catcher, two catchers in one league. And Ozuna, I just got cold feet. I didn't want to waste a pick on a designated hitter only who had no prospects of fielding at all. And boy, I could use some Marcel Ozuna in uh, those category leagues. And he's basically helped me stay alive in my points league, too, as I hunt for that wild card spot. But Ozuna, 81st hitter among ADP, 83. 83rd best hitter among ATC projections. And I was really high on him this up, this uh, season. How high was I on him? I would have selected him. players ahead of Ozuna that I would have selected over. over. I would have selected over Ozuna over Oz. Yeah, let me start over. Players that were ranked ahead of Marcelo Zuna, who I would have still picked Marcelo Zuna. I would have picked Ozuna over Lane Thomas, Reese Hoskins, TJ Freely, Max Muncy, Spencer Steer, Jorge, Jorge Soler, Cedric Mullins, Hassan Kim, maybe not William Contreras, definitely Jazz Chisholm, because I don't like Jazz Chisholm. Uh, I don't trust O'Neill Cruz. I don't trust Ellie De La Cruz as much as I trusted um, Marcelo Zuna. Masataka Yoshida, especially in those category leagues, that's the one that caused me trouble. And that's where, that's where a lot of the and especially in my baseball life league, that's where the failure to get Ozuna really was felt because I, I think I what happened was I, I I selected Yoshida over Ozuna, and that ended up costing me. But I definitely would have picked uh, Ozuna over Jung Hu Lee, Stephen Kwan, Nick Castellanos. Uh, you guys know how much I love Vinny Pasquantino, so maybe not that. Definitely over Willie Adamas. Definitely over Bryson Stott. I did like Seiya Suzuki here, but I think I would have picked Ozuna over Suzuki and then hoped to get Suzuki Later on in the draft, over definitely over George Springer, maybe not over Josh Naylor, and maybe not over Nate Lowe. Ah, it's hard to tell. I don't know because I did like Nate Lowe coming into the season, but I, yeah, I think that's a wash right there. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ozuna over Royce Lewis because Lewis is always hurt, but then again, Lewis is more excitable. So now we're getting to that point where it's kind of a gray area. Tristan Cassis, I'm a huge Tristan Cassis fan coming into this season, this year, so I definitely got Tristan Cassis in my points league, but I also made sure to get Ozuna as well as on my utility spot. So, yeah, I was high on Ozuna, even though he was ranked 83rd overall. I thought he would do much better than that. 
And so far he has, uh, to the tune of him being the 12th best hitter in this league with 37 home runs, 98 RBIs, 306 batting average, 377 on base, and 573 slugging percentage. The guy is just a hitting machine for the Atlanta Braves. And probably the primary reason that despite they have all these injuries, they had a struggling Matt Olsen. Uh, Ronald Acuna is out for the year. Ozzie Albies got hurt. Uh, I believe it was a hand injury. He might come back later this month. <clears throat> but basically, the Braves had to, had to MacGyver their lineup to stay in contention this season. And Marcelo Zuna is the catalyst to all that. So uh, it's just a remarkable run. And a lot of folks dropped the ball, including myself. Like I said, it's hard to go with a designated hitter. But maybe that's that should be the new norm moving forward. <laughs> Let's see here. Marcel Lozuna. So we're going to go to player number 81. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's see how fast we can go here. Cal Rally, uh, somewhere in between. Uh, he was ADP, 80, 83rd best player, ADP. So he's right. He's the 81st best player in this league. He went as the 83rd best hitter in average draft position among the fantasy leaguers this past March. But ATC had him at 155th overall. But... 81st overall in this league with the 27 big home runs, despite the fact that he's hitting 204 with a putrid 298 on base percentage. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the saving grace is the 413 slugging percentage. So that's what makes him relevant. Um, and he's, as a catcher, he's finishing ahead of guys like Will Smith, which is just, I never in a million years, I would never pick Cal Rally over Will Smith, but. Rally is doing better than Will Smith this season, according to the points, uh, the amount of points, 318 versus uh, Smith's 311. Better than Tyler Stevenson, who was supposed to um, get all the playing time they could handle in Cincinnati. I guess that didn't happen. Only 379 at-bats. Not sure he's been hurt. I mean, healthy amount of home runs, 18 home runs. Actually, Stevenson's pretty Oh, my God. So there must have been some injury. But Steven, Stevenson's pretty damn good. 261 batting average, 338 on base percentage, 470 slugging percentage, but still, as of September 1st, does not have 300 points, whereas Cal Rally already has 318. So, but yeah, Stevenson, if he could stay healthy, he might, that might be a catcher we, we need to look out for for next year. Either way, Rally is ahead of Stevenson at this point. I'm looking for one more catcher. Ryan Jeffers, nah, eh, whatever. Shay Langeliers, uber prospect, big time power. Well, Riley had last day check 27 home runs, beats Shane Langeliers 23 home runs all the time. Cal Riley doing better than his teammate, Holy Rodriguez. Still plays for the Mariners, both of those guys, right? Yeah, the Mariners. Do I believe he really is the 81st best player? I don't think so. I still would pick Josh Bell, Hassan Kim, Jack Peterson. Maybe not Jack Peterson. Definitely Josh Bell, Hassan Kim over Cal Rally. Adolis Garcia, I'm the biggest Adolis Garcia hater. I would still pick him over Rally, Bellinger, Yanni Diaz. I'm not sure about Carlos Santana or Taylor Ward. Definitely Will Smith over Rally. I was definitely picking Dalton Varsho over Rally. Goldschmidt, I think, still better. McCarthy could still be better. Verdugo could still be better than Rally. But that's not what the points say. The last points say that Rally. Has earned that 81st overall just behind Trey Turner. And yeah, just behind Trey Turner, which is just mind boggling to me. <clears throat> so, what was he, 81st? So, we go to 83. And then we, now we have to talk about Hassan Kim, who had a really good year last year. Uh, last I remember, definitely was a big reason why the Padres are in contention. For those who don't believe in war, I mean, this guy, when everybody was, the Padres were, were, were riddled with injuries. Uh, Kim, at one point, I believe, if I remember correctly, among all hitters, led the team and wins above replacement uh, per the Fangraphs equation. I know people are already screaming like, oh, that's why war sucks. But no, nah, he uh, defensively, he held his own. And he was having, I mean, he had a pretty darn good on base percentage. He was being productive last year. And that's why I selected him in the in the points league. Yeah, 83 is a nice number, but yeah, he's kind of underwhelmed this year. He's not 11 home runs, 22 stolen bases this year. But <clears throat> let's see here. Yeah, he was ADP had him as the 53 best hitter, and ATC had him as the 75th best hitter. So 
people might say, oh, well, you're just, you know, you're, you're, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? You're being uh, petty about it. 75th is not too far from 83, but last I checked, 75th is still better than 83. And what were the projections, the conservative projections? He was supposed to hit 15 home runs, I guess. If he gets healthy, he's on pace to match that, but it's going to be close. Uh, 27 stolen bases, yeah, he could still try to match that. It's pretty darn close. We're still waiting for him to come back from injury. 246 batting average was the projection. Only 233 in reality. 327 on base. He's at 331 right now. At uh, Currently, 370 slugging. He was projected to get 383 slugging coming into the season. Looking at the doubles really quick. Yeah, 26 doubles, but he's only hit third, 16 doubles this season. So that stinks for him. We That's why the points are lacking. The doubles aren't there. The, the slugging isn't there. Yeah, and I held on to him as, mu as, as much as I could, but I just couldn't do it anymore. He was just too damn inconsistent and... Uh, and once he got hurt, I, I just couldn't justify keeping him around. And I, yeah, I also have him in the podcast league. I cut him there. I, I dropped him there too, just because I needed uh I needed a burst in offense, and I'm I'm desperately looking for any type of offense at this point, especially in the playoffs. But yeah, Kim was of no use to me anymore. So maybe he's a bounce back candidate. But yeah, he's definitely a disappointment, no question about it. <laughs> Let's see how many players we got here. And it looks like. We have two more guys. Let's see if we could just go fast. I believe was a as a 53. Yeah. Well, we can talk about these two plays right here. <clears throat> Stephen Kwan, 116th ADP, which is really late. ATC 68. So he's surpassed all expectations. And I, I read a story where the Guardians were telling him that he needs to be more aggressive at the play. This guy's uber patient, supremely patient, really good batting eye. And the Guardians are telling him, hey. You should uh, hit the ball as far as you can sometimes. It, it, it wouldn't hurt you to miss every once in a while. As long as you give us a harder swing every once in a while, we, I think you'll be, you and I, you and the team would be better for it. And that's the Guardians saying this. The Guardians uh, loved just stockpiling on these contact hitters. As we found out, that it's just cheaper that way. But also, you know, the, Market inefficiency. Everybody's uh, teaching about the launch angle, and the Guardians are going to stick to contact, keeping those contact rates up. Unless you're Jose Ramirez or uh, Josh Naylor <laughs> or Bo Naylor. Looking at Stephen Kwan's projections, really, I want to see if there was anything peculiar there, but no, nah, not really. Seventeen stolen bases was a projection. Only eleven. He was supposed to hit five home runs. He's already at thirteen. Sacrificing the doubles power, though. Either way. 364 on base. 436 slugging currently. We know he can hit for 300. He's at, currently at 298. The big number is the 436 slugging percentage because he was only projected to do 373. So that's big time. And, he, and the on base is way, way over his projection as well. So that explains a lot of his success. Doing better than Nick Castellanos. Guys like J.J. Blade, who was useful for a few weeks or even months earlier this year doing better than Mookie Betts but we know because of the injury Jackson Churio the uber rookie he he took a while to get jump started but he's held his own he's doing very well now I, I don't remember the last time he had a bad week for me in my uh baseball life league which is a keeper league so I have a tough decision to make but I think I'm pretty comfortable keeping Jackson Churio for the long run I'm very excited at the prospect of having Jackson Churio. Better than Seiya Suzuki, better than Lourdes Gurriel. These are veteran players that people go and get and go after. Definitely better than Randy Arozarena. I mean, yeah, anybody's going to be better than Arozarena. Better than Riley Green, who's a super prospect for the Tigers, for those who don't know. Better than Jesse Winker, who is a pretty darn good hitter, but he gets neutralized by left-handed pitching. And better than Cody Bellinger as far as outfielders go. But yeah, let's talk about Randy Arizona. And that's it. This is the last player. Thank you, everybody, for making it this far. You can catch us on Spotify, YouTube, 
I was supposed to set up an email account this year and I was going to get to it tonight and I didn't. Shame on me. Well, one day you guys can chime in, ask me questions or comments or another way to communicate with the show. Get your thoughts across and put it on the record. Whether you want to mention the whether you want me to mention the name or not, I will oblige at, at Randy Arizona. Was supposed to be the thirty two the thirty second uh, selected hitter among average draft position, twenty sixth overall among ATC projections. So that that's supposed to be your top thirty hitter, not Matt Chapman. This guy right here, Arozarena. He got off to a bad start last year too, but he just uh, exploded in the second half last year, and he made it. He made the you know those people patiently waiting for him to do something last year. Uh, he. He he uh, uh, rewarded those guys like me who had Randy Arozarena in this points league. By the way, uh, he rewarded that um, my patience with just this huge blowout in the second half. He really made up for lost time, but it was too little, too late. And owners were expecting the same thing for him this year too, but that has not come to fruition. He's really even he's just been really struggling. The twenty six doubles are night. Nice 18 home runs, but again, this is supposed to be a top 30 uh hitter, and he's on the brink of being seventh over 70th overall, doing worse than Brandon Donovan, Lourdes Gurriel. Oh, well, I just mentioned all those guys at outfield, but yeah, you're doing worse than Brandon Donovan. Come on, guy, you're barely beating out Willie Castro by what, what is that half a point. You're supposed to be in your prime while George Springer is supposed to be in the twilight of his career. Yet, Arozarena's lead in this points league is, yeah, just a point and a half better than George Springer. He's only slightly doing better than Ezekiel Tovar and Luis Garcia, Mason Wynn. Uh, prospects with some limited upside. Well, in the and in terms of Luis Garcia, I don't. Luis Garcia, on. I can't believe Luis Garcia is ranked that high, but that's because the Nationals keep putting him out there. But you know he's produced. Luis Garcia fourth. What was that? Four fifty two slugging percentage. A Rosarena, who's supposed to be this explosive player, three ninety one. But yeah, we have always said that a Rosarena is a very streaky hitter. But man, this is. This is just disappointing to see that he's been this putrid 217 batting average. And we don't even need to see the projections. He's just supposed to be better than this. So let's take a look. What is wrong with Randy Arozarena? <clears throat> we so we got to know. We got to figure this out. Why is he so bad? And we'll finish with that. We talked a lot tonight, this evening, mostly about hitters. Actually, it's all about hitters tonight. I'm, I owe you guys a pitching episode hopefully i get to it sometime in within the next week or so and we'll see we'll see where this uh where the podcast takes me from there uh let's see i mean the walks and strikeouts percentages are basically the same i wonder if it's just a thing with him being a lot more patient and maybe he's just one of those guys because the county stats are there except for the runs and rbi but the home runs and stolen bases are there I wonder if it's one of those situations where we just got to let the guy be himself and be aggressive at all times. But this is, these are disappointing numbers, man. The ISO power is still the same from last year. But he's just not doing it on a consistent basis. And I, 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 I hypothesize that this is a guy who's being told to be more patient. And he's making less contact than ever before. Those are my guesses. We're going to find out. But before we do all that, we gotta check out the other stuff. Let's see the stack has numbers. Still at an exit velocity over 90 miles an hour. The barrel rate dropped once again this year. Although it's 8.2. His average uh, career is 9.3, but still 8.2 is pretty healthy for a guy like him. So it can't be that. 42.2% hard hit rate. Nah, it can't be that either. Even the expected numbers don't <clears throat> don't support him too much either. Better ball data. Nah, everything still everything looks pretty similar to what we've seen in years past. He's pulling the ball more. Maybe he's becoming a lot more predictable. And because that 
I've seen I've noticed that before over the years of doing this is that when you're pulling the ball at a high rate, even even when this post the extreme shift era of baseball, uh, these uh, major league fielders, especially third base and shortstops, they can anticipate that and turn you into an easy out. Even or even left fielders too, and center fielders. Yeah, a good center fielder will cover a lot of ground. I'm not a big fan of looking at the the pitching usage against hitters. I I don't see any value in that, but. Uh, more fastballs, more sinkers, more splitters, and less breaking pitches. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't see it. Excuse me. But, yeah, I usually like to look at the pitch info. That's what I've been using for the longest time, so I'm going to go with it. I think it's pitch info. I'm going to say it's pitch info. So, uh, actually, Rosarena has always been a patient hitter, but he's definitely a lot more patient this year in terms of overall swing rate. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Rosarena has always been a patient hitter. Has he seen less pitches inside the strike zone? No, he's slightly seen more pitches inside the strike zone compared to last year, and especially uh, this is uh, the highest that we've seen that he's seen pitches inside the strike zone since 2021. I was predicted a lower contact rate. Not true. It's about the same from last year, and his outside the contact rate is actually higher. Outside the strike zone contact rate is actually higher than last year. Called strikes that those are up, and maybe there's something to this where the strike zone has been expanded against him. Maybe, and maybe that would explain why he's seen so many pitches in the strike zone. But yeah, the call strike percentage is 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 way up there, nineteen point eight percent, and that means that the call plus swinging strike rate is at a high. Uh, it's the highest we've seen that from Aros Aros Arena since twenty twenty, currently at thirty one point one percent. The swinging strike rate, it's actually dropped. It's actually the lowest it's been since his rookie season with the St. Louis Cardinals. So, yeah, there's – I don't have a straight answer. The only thing is that maybe he's seen an unfair strike zone. And that's the best solution I can give you guys. But, yeah, I, I'm disappointed too. I was expecting much better things from the guy. So that's it. That's about 14 players and then some. I talked about some prospects. I talked about some other players who were on the list. Surprises, disappointments. Let us know who you who you think is a, one of the biggest surprises in terms of hitters this year. And maybe get ready to chime in with your pitchers. And also some disappointments. And perhaps some bounce back seasons. Maybe Mookie Betts is on that list. Richie Palacios. Um, maybe we'll see. Or maybe a breakout uh, or... Let me get would Zach Nettle is this year be considered breakout or would next year be a breakout season or most improved? I don't know. <clears throat> you guys tell me. Are we seeing the start of superstar Jaron Duran as a consistent major league all star perennial all star major league baseball player? Or will next year be a rude awakening for the guy? Remember, he used to be a pretty formidable prospect in the Red Sox farm system. So there is some um, there is some quality to the guy, some uh, uh, pedigree to him, but we've also seen him struggle mightily. You know, you, you can't take away from the fact that maybe there is something to that that um, that maybe 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 we'll see a, a downfall for Jaron Duran. These I don't think he's getting drafted in the top ten next year. I mean. He's not a first round pick. I don't think he is. Gunnar Henderson, maybe. Matt Chapman, no. Marcelo Zuna, uh, I don't know. I think the price might be too high. And again, he only plays the age, but you know, he's producing, but he will be a year older next year. We can't expect him to be this uber hitter that he's shown in the last couple of seasons. Eventually, the bottom will fall out. So I'm definitely, this would have been a year to get Marcelo Zuna because next year I will not be targeting him, it looks like, unless the price is juicy enough for me to take them. Uh, Stephen Kwan, I think this you, this might be the best we've seen of Stephen Kwan. I think uh, he just doesn't have enough upside to um, keep it going for next season. Mookie Betts, yeah, definitely bounce back candidate. I still believe in Mookie Betts. Randy Rosarena, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I guess I will. He's a major disappointment this year, but definitely a bounce back candidate next year, and the price will be right. 
But man, you're you. I think the best thing to do is to make sure you have a backup plan for Randy or Rosarena because he's still a big name. Cal Rally, I think his his draft stock's gonna fall ironically for despite the twenty seven home runs. He's not a top ten catcher. No way. There's no way. I mean, and if he is, that's just because catching might be so weak. But I think he falls off the top ten next year in terms of catchers. Hassan Kim. I still believe in him. <clears throat> he just has a skill set to be a steady major league uh, baseball player, especially from a stolen base department. And he has some pop. He's shown that he has some pop. So he's bounced back candidate there as well. Dansby Swanson, I never liked him. I was not thrilled when the Cubs signed him, but I kind of reluctantly accepted him as a Cubs fan. But no, I'm not a big fan. I was never a fan of Dansby Swanson. So uh, we might see a decline this might be the start of a decline in Dansby Swanson's career arc. Andrew McCutcheon, um, he might retire next year. Who knows? Nate Lowe, he needs to do better than this. I mean, he's just, I be, I just believe in him. He needs to get traded. Get, get him away from Texas. Put him in a Yankees uniform. And Richard Palacios is an interesting player, just from a stolen base aspect. A guy who has really good plate discipline and has shown the ability, and even though it's a small sample size, has shown the ability to get on base. For those look for those looking for stolen base potential, and especially a guy like me who only plays in on base percentage leagues, even though it's head to head, I still looking for on base guys, on base guys who can steal bases, and they're gonna get selected very late, depending on where the Rays, what the Rays decide to do with him, and how they want to structure their roster and their outfield next year. He might be someone, a sneaky pick next year. He might be someone to look out for next season. And on that note. That's the show. We'll talk some pictures next time we get together again. But until then, I was Felipe, and this was the Total Basis Podcast. Have a good night, everybody.